Hey, Professor David Stuckler here. Today, I wanna to share with you what I've learned from publishing over 400 papers in leading peer-reviewed journals, both in natural and social sciences. It's almost like if having a conversation with you, if I could have a conversation with my younger self, what would I say about this process? What, what have I learned that I've done well? What have I done less well? And what, if I could go back and do it again, could I have done better? So I'm gonna share with you five real big insights that I've reflected on and I've shared with my students that I wanna make available to you. The first, it gets easier. The first paper is always the hardest. It's the hardest to crack because there's so many known unknowns. Like the things you know you don't know. You've gotta figure out academic writing. You've gotta figure out a winning topic. You've gotta to learn new methods and techniques. It takes a long time. There are so many things that are unpredictable that can lead you to feel deflated. I mean, when I look back, one type of paper that our students do a lot of, systematic reviews, it took me six months. And now I can do the paper itself in about two to three weeks, even faster sometimes. And it, it takes a long time too for a second reason. Peer review. So peer review is when you finally have finished your paper and you send it to a journal for review and the editor sends it on to independent reviewers who are gonna say, does this pass muster? Is this good enough to be published in uh, international journals? And I got rejected so many times. It was devastating. I wanted to throw in the towel. I remember the first rejection I got. I thought, I hate these reviewers. These guys are idiots. They didn't understand what I said. What the heck is wrong with them? And I, I wanted to strangle some invisible person I couldn't even see. And uh, then I caught my breath calmed down, kept a cool head, and started to reframe things more positively, more positively to say, well, how can I write more clearly to avoid those misunderstandings? And I started to assume the reviewers are just dumb. They're, they're busy. They're maybe quickly glancing at my paper on a train or plane, wherever they are. I often review papers on a plane. Um, I like it because I'm not distracted. But have some sympathy for your readers. And when I started to do that, reframed in my mind, I saw these critiques as an opportunity to improve. And so peer review is not fair, and you need to develop thick skin to approach this process. And the first time, it's kind of like you don't have the calluses on your feet and you're stepping on these hard stones on the beach and it hurts. By the end, it's, you're just gonna kind of walk along like it's no big deal. That's all part of the journey and you're gonna get there, but don't throw in the towel, don't give up. You definitely wanna seek help and support so that you can get to that next level. The third thing that I learned is that what I thought were my best papers were not always perceived as the best in the journals. The papers that I have that got the most citations, I'm talking not just hundreds, but thousands of citations, had a very clear and simple message. Now, that was different from in my mind. In my mind, the technical paper that had lots of fancy gizmos and lots of deep nuanced insights were gonna be the best ones. But no, what cut through the noise in this information age were the simple, well-defined, clear messages that readers could really access, even in the title or the abstract, so that when they're searching in Google Scholar, they could find the paper easily. It will go to the top of the search and be, be cited much, much more and used more widely. And that really revamped how I write my papers now uh, to really focus on things that I know I can drop these little nuggets that are going to get more highly cited. You know, it, it really leads me to another point related to this is that you know, at the beginning, I didn't have a system. I wish I would have had a system that I was working from that I evolved and I developed over the years that now make it super simple. Let me know tips and tricks that are gonna help improve my odds of peer review, that are gonna help me engineer my paper to not just get accepted, but get tons of citations, extending its impact and its life. And if you're interested in that kind of simple system, definitely join my free Facebook group. Got a lot of valuable content and trainings that go in much greater depth than we can do here that are gonna give you really practical guidance and advice on how you can tap these own shortcuts of having a simple system for publishing in the background guiding you forward. The fourth big point, I wanna share with you is that co-authors really help. They really make a difference. When you're getting burnt out and tired of a paper, you should pass it on to a co-author. It's like they can breathe new life into it, inject new energy. And at the beginning, I was trying to do everything on my own. And I found over time that I produce twice as much, actually more, fourfold as much with co-authors because those co-authors, when I bring them on board, not only are they helping improve my paper, but they often invite me on their papers. And it's just a host of benefits. So I strongly recommend co-authoring. It's your tool to build your network, build collegial, collaborative relations in the field and also to find and identify effective mentors. You really need a, a mentor because really what got you here won't get you there. And mentors really, especially when they're co-authors, is the secret to building a relationship where you're mutually benefiting and investing in each, each other's success. I don't want you to feel closed, keeping all your cards close to your chest and anti-competitive. It's just not the spirit. It's not the right way for long-term success in your field.
Finally, maybe a less optimistic note, my fifth point. What I've learned is you're sometimes perceived that you're only as good as your last paper. So when you get invited to conferences, when you're applying for grants, people tend to not look at the decades of experience that you've got. They look at the most recent papers you've published. You're gonna see where you're going, what's hot, where your thinking is. This is important for jobs as well. And this can keep you on a perpetual treadmill of publishing more and more papers. And it changes the, the way you feel as well. I remember when I first got my paper published in the Lancet. It was like a bomb went off in my world. It was like this jolt of electricity. I, I couldn't sleep. I was so high on energy. I, I had accomplished something I never thought would have been possible before. Now it's just like, yep, yeah, just just another day in the office. Uh, I just got to do what I've got to do. But it evolves. I mean, I've moved from being first author to now the senior author. And a lot of my success is kind of prismed through my students who I work with. And I get excited for them when I see that joy for the first time when they, they finally get that big high impact publication. And I feel like I'm just their agent promoting their success and making a difference through them making a difference and a big impact on, on the world. And you'll see that evolution in your own career going forward. So listen, if you found this helpful, well, join my Facebook group, and if you want more of a secret publishing tips that are going to help you engineer a smooth, easy ride in peer review from submitting through to revision, you're not going to want to miss this next video.